December 2025. New Gemini Observatory images just confirmed something amateur astronomers have been documenting for weeks. 3i Atlas is turning green, not faintly, not ambiguously, noticeably greener than observations from earlier this year with the color shift appearing consistently across multiple filters, multiple processing methods, independent image captures. This isn't post-processing artifact. This isn't atmospheric interference. The green emission is coming from the object itself, strong enough to dominate color balance when images combine red, orange, blue, and green spectral bands. And here's what makes this impossible to dismiss. The background stars appear as streaks because the telescope is locked onto 3i Atlas tracking its motion, meaning everything else drifts while the object stays centered. The green glow isn't reflected light from surrounding sky. It's direct emission from material venting off the nucleus. Diatomic carbon, C2 and cyanogen, Cn, fluoresce green when solar UV excites their molecular bonds, standard comet chemistry. Except 3i Atlas showed minimal outgassing before perihelion, and now, months after closest solar approach while moving away and cooling, the green emission is intensifying. Solar heating drops with distance. Activity should be fading. Instead, it's ramping up. If you've been following 3i Atlas, wondering when visual confirmation would prove something fundamental changed, this is that moment. Hit subscribe, drop a like, and let's break down what Gemini just documented. Because when an interstellar object gets brighter and greener while moving away from its heat source, every natural explanation starts failing. Let's start with what green means in comet observation, because understanding baseline chemistry makes this behavior so disturbing. When comets approach the sun, solar ultraviolet irradiation breaks molecular bonds in venting gases. Diatomic carbon and cyanogen, both carbon-bearing molecules, absorb UV photons and re-emit them at specific wavelengths in the green part of the visible spectrum, around 510 to 520 nanometers. That's why active comets often show green comas. It's fluorescence, not reflection, but fluorescence requires two conditions. UV radiation input and molecular gas output. As a comet moves closer to the sun, solar UV intensity increases by the inverse square law. More UV means more molecular excitation, more green emission. As the comet moves away, UV flux decreases. Less energy input means less fluorescence. The green fades. Standard behavior, 3i atlas, past perihelion. October 29th, 2025. It's now December. Over a month later, moving away from the sun, solar UV intensity dropping every day. The object should be cooling, outgassing should be decreasing, green emission should be fading. Instead, new Gemini observatory images show 3i Atlas is noticeably greener than earlier this year, before perihelion, when it was closer to the sun receiving more UV radiation. That inverts the expected behavior. You don't get increasing fluorescence while moving away from the excitation source unless something is compensating for the dropping UV flux. Either the object is venting dramatically more C2 and Cn molecules now than it was pre-perihelion, or there's an internal energy source driving molecular excitation independent of solar heating. Now let's talk about how we know this color shift is physical, not instrumental. The first Gemini image shows 3i Atlas centered and sharp while background stars appear as streaks. That's not camera shake, that's differential tracking. The telescope is locked onto 3i Atlas following its motion across the sky. Everything that's stationary relative to the distant stellar background, the stars, drifts during the exposure, creating trails. The object being tracked stays pinpoint. That tracking lock proves the green emission is coming from 3i Atlas itself, not from surrounding sky glow or atmospheric contamination. If the color were an artifact, light pollution, air glow, instrument response, it would affect the entire field uniformly. Background stars would show the same color shift. They don't. The stars streak white. 3i Atlas glows green. The second Gemini image applies motion correction, snapping the background stars back into points instead of trails. This lets you isolate 3i Atlas's structure without the visual distraction of stellar motion. And the result? Same green tone, same compact central region, same faint, evenly distributed envelope. No fragmentation, no asymmetric breakup, just a stable, actively emitting nucleus, producing green fluorescence. 
When two independently processed frames, one tracking the object, one correcting for stellar motion, both show the same color shift, it stops being ambiguous. That's reproducible observational evidence of real physical emission from the object, not processing quirk or instrumental artifact. Let's map the behavior chronologically because timing is everything. Pre-perihelion observations from July-September showed 3i Atlas as relatively dim and neutral colored. Some observers noted faint greenish tint but nothing dominant. Spectroscopic analysis by the Very Large Telescope found no hydroxyl, OH, no cyanogen, CN, the signature molecules that produce green emission. The object appeared chemically silent, then came perihelion passage October 29th. The object survived closest solar approach, 0.64 AU, inside Venus's orbit, without fragmenting. Post-perihelion observations in early November showed increased activity, jets forming, coma expanding, brightness rising, expected behavior, solar heating triggered outgassing. But here's where it diverges from the model. Six weeks after perihelion, while moving away from the sun at 1.8 plus AU and cooling, the green emission is stronger than it was pre-perihelion when the object was closer and receiving more UV. That's not how passive solar heating works. The timeline is inverted. If 3i Atlas were a normal comet responding purely to solar radiation, we'd see peak green emission at or shortly after perihelion, then gradual fading as it recedes. Instead, we're seeing delayed intensification, maximum green emission occurring weeks after peak solar heating while the object moves into cooler regions where UV flux is dropping. That delay suggests either subsurface reservoirs releasing gas on timescales disconnected from immediate solar input, or active regulation of outgassing driven by internal processes rather than passive solar heating. Now let's address the molecular source. Green emission requires C2 and CN in the coma. Both are breakdown products of larger organic molecules, methanol, hydrogen cyanide, complex hydrocarbons, vaporizing from the nucleus, and fragmenting under UV bombardment. The more parent molecules you vent, the more C2 and CN you produce, the greener the coma. But early spectroscopic observations found minimal CN before perihelion. The Very Large Telescope detected no cyanogen signature. That absence was one reason researchers questioned whether 3i Atlas was even a comet. No CN meant no typical comet chemistry. Fast forward to December. The Gemini images show strong green emission implying significant C2CN production. Where did it come from? Either the object had subsurface CN reservoirs that only activated post-perihelion, or the pre-perihelion spectroscopy missed something, or the object is producing CN through mechanisms that don't fit standard sublimation models. And here's the detail that bothers me. CN production typically peaks near perihelion when solar heating is maximum, then declines as the comet cools. We're seeing the opposite, minimal CN pre-perihelion, strong CN post-perihelion, while cooling. That's backwards. The Gemini images don't just show color shift, they show increased brightness. 3i Atlas is visibly brighter in December than in July, despite being farther from the sun and receiving less illumination. Brightness should follow the inverse square law. Double the distance, one quarter the reflected sunlight, we're seeing the opposite, increased luminosity at increased distance. That brightness increase has two possible sources. Samica increased reflective surface area, more dust in the coma, scattering sunlight, or increased intrinsic emission, more molecules fluorescing. Given the strong green color, it's likely both, more dust and more gas, both increasing simultaneously while the object moves away from its heat source. Natural comets can show delayed outbursts as subsurface ice finally reaches sublimation temperature weeks after perihelion, but those outbursts are transient. They spike, then fade. What Gemini is documenting looks sustained. Multiple observation sessions over weeks showing consistent green emission and elevated brightness. That's not an outburst, that's persistent elevated activity maintained while solar input decreases. Let's summarize what Gemini Observatory just confirmed across multiple independent images. Color shift, noticeably greener than pre-perihelion observations, confirmed across multiple filters and processing methods. Emission source, green glow comes from the object itself, 
proven by differential tracking showing streaked stars and centered nucleus. Timeline inversion, maximum green emission occurring weeks after perihelion while moving away and cooling. Opposite expected behavior. Brightness increase, visibly brighter despite increased solar distance and reduced illumination. Chemical emergence, strong C2CN emission. Now, despite minimal CN detection pre-perihelion. Sustained activity, not transient outburst, persistent elevated emission across weeks of observation. Each anomaly alone could be explained with creative natural mechanisms, subsurface reservoirs, delayed heating, unusual composition, but all of them together, exhibiting the same inverted timeline where activity increases while solar input decreases. That's not stretching natural explanations. That's breaking them. If 3i Atlas were purely responding to solar heating, we'd see peak activity at perihelion, gradual decline afterward. We're seeing the opposite. Activity ramping up after perihelion, sustained while cooling. Strongest emission occurring when it should be fading. That behavior implies internal energy source or active regulation of outgassing independent of solar distance. And once you're invoking internal energy or active control, you're no longer describing a passive ice ball responding to sunlight. You're describing something operating. Why is 3i Atlas getting greener and brighter while moving away from the sun? What mechanism sustains C2CN emission at elevated levels weeks after peak solar heating? Where is the energy coming from to drive increased outgassing while solar input drops? Natural hypotheses require increasingly specific conditions. Maybe subsurface ice reservoirs are hitting critical temperature with thermal lag. Maybe rotational exposure is bringing fresh, volatile-rich regions into sunlight. Maybe composition is so unusual that standard sublimation models don't apply. Or maybe the object isn't responding to external solar heating at all. Maybe the green emission, the brightness increase, the sustained activity, all of it, is driven by something internal. Something that doesn't care about solar distance. Something that regulates output based on parameters we can't measure. Gemini Observatory just gave us visual confirmation of behavior that inverts every natural expectation. The longer we watch, the less it looks like a comet. What do you think is causing the green emission to intensify while 3i Atlas moves away from the sun? Delayed outgassing, internal energy, or active regulation? Drop your theory below. Subscribe for updates as more Gemini data releases. And share this. Because when an object gets brighter and greener while cooling, calling it just a comet isn't science. It's wishful thinking.